Well, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Tracy sitting here, just spending some time with the Lord, reading scripture. I was in Isaiah 41 today. Um, it's a lot of good things um, that I just received just reading that. I wanted to come to you guys and, and talk to you guys about this whole vegan vegan vegetarian thing that's not what i was reading about but it's it's been in in my heart and in my spirit to talk about this in a video and i've kind of been putting it off because i'm like lord <laughs> i want to make sure that when i do things that that it's of you and not something that tracy wants to talk about because it's something tracy wants to talk about um <laughs> I've been getting like a, a whole bunch of friend requests these last couple of days. I'm like, what's going on? I don't know if y'all heard that ding or not, but I'm like, well, what's up with that? But anyway, we'll ignore it for now. We're going to get this done. Um, I want to start with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for who you are, for your word, that your word covers everything in life. There is nothing that we will ever um, come in contact with that your word does not give us direction about. I thank you for re revelation, for understanding. Um, I, I, I've fallen in love with Proverbs 23, Father, where it is written uh, to buy truth and sell it not. I was like, oh, I like that scripture. I thank you for that, God. I thank you for um, those who will hear this word and take heed. I thank you for those who will hear this word and say that I'm crazy and ignore me and one day come to know that it is the truth. I thank you for those that will get in their Bibles and research for themselves. I thank you for those that will um, get on their knees, on their faces, in a chair, wherever it is that they they get, whatever position they talk to you in, that they'll seek you and say, Lord, show me if this is truth or not. Father, your word is already blessed. I pray that you would bless my memory to remember the things that you've shown me, the things that you've shared with me, um, the the confirmations that you've given me so that when I share this information, people will know that this is not of Tracy, but that it is of God. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Um, I remember a few years ago, I, it was a friend that I had that we used to pray together um, and she had joined this church and at some point the pastor of the church which was a woman had let another allowed another woman i don't know if what her ministry position was but come into the church and started talking to the congregation about eating meat and how that we shouldn't eat meat and so the congregation was was going vet, vegetarian and I was like, well, that's not God. And I I, I, I have this book. I'll tell you about this book. I'm sure that many of you have heard of this book. It's called He Came to Set the Captives Free. And it was by Dr. Rebecca Brown. And then there was a part two to the book that was called Prepare for War. And it's one of them books that if you don't believe in spiritual warfare, it's not for you. It is not for you. If you don't believe that um, demons and fallen angels literally do things and can affect this world, book's not for you. Um, but it was given to me by my sister, Teresa, years ago. <clears throat> and so anyway, long story short, there was a portion in the book where uh, Rebecca Brown talked about... Um, the eating of meat and and why um god gave us animals to eat and you know how you know like you you read stuff you know you, you if you really think about it if you if you're a book if you were ever into books i'm like i don't really like to read read but i'm one of the people if 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 it's if i get into a good book i can't put it down so it's like i like i think i read that book in like three days i couldn't put it down um but you know, you, you read books or you watch videos, you get, you know, we get information from a lot of different places. And sometimes 
we read stuff that we don't realize that we took in until we God brings us back to it in another way. So I say all that to say, um, I was reading in Genesis and we do this with the Bible as well because the Bible is so rich. <laughs> There's no words to really describe how rich the the word of God is. Um, but the Bible is so rich. There there are scriptures that you, you've known all your life. You've, you've quoted it. You've threw it out there. You've lived by it. And then God takes you to another level in your relationship with him. And then you go back and read some of them same scriptures. It's like, ooh, <laughs> it's like a whole new life that came from it. So I was reading Genesis and I can't remember because, you know, I, you know, I, I might say I'm going to read the book of Genesis and I might read through the whole book. And then, OK, now I'm going to go read Philipp Philippians and go read, you know, just whatever. So I've read, you know, Genesis a lot of times, but I just remember and I don't remember the exact time. I know it was years ago because I wrote an article about it in the early 2000s and I was reading um Genesis and I, when you get to chapter six and it, it talked about how the the fallen angels that come down and made it with the women and and created these demons and all that you know they well you know they made it with the women and and had children by them and then those were the giants that the Bible talked about like David when, when he killed the Goliath he killed a giant what the reason that Goliath was a giant was because his daddy was an angel. <laughs> And I know people are probably thinking, oh, she crazy. No, I'm not crazy. Just read your word. It's in there. Um, anyway, so after so and so, you know, and, and it that's one of the reasons why God destroyed the earth with water. But there, you know, there were there people were just wicked. It was like all people did was wickedness, 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 wickedness. So he destroyed the earth and everything with water, put Noah and the rest of his family on a boat and you know, saved them. And then when it's time, it was like, okay, the water, the land's dried up, get off the boat or whatever. And one of the first things, I don't really like doing videos where I'm holding my phone because I hate movement when people are, it drives me nuts. So I'm like, how dare you do what drives you nuts that other people do? Sorry for this movement. Um, I should have gotten my little thing to prop this up so that I don't have to be moving around. But I'm in Genesis chapter 9. I'm going to start reading at verse 1. And this is out of the Amplified Bible that I just love. And God pronounced a blessing upon Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you... And the dread and terror of you shall be upon every beast of the land, every bird of the air, all that creeps up on the ground and up on all the fish of the sea. They are delivered into your hand. Every moving thing that lives. This is important. This is verse three. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green vegetables and plants, I give you everything. But you shall not eat flesh with the life of it, which is its blood. And surely for your lifeblood, I will require an accounting. From every beast, I will require it. And from man, from every man who spills another's lifeblood, I will require a reckoning. And then it goes on. But um, so this one particular day I was I was reading this and you know how sometimes when you're reading and something just jumps out at you. And so what jumped out at me was like, OK, wait a minute. Why all of a sudden are they eating meat? And I'm one of those type of people when I when I come across something like that that catches me something that seems like it's that's this one in scriptures that you know you read over and you just keep going you don't think that much about it because in all honesty you have if I almost never heard any preacher preach on this stuff they don't even want to talk about the fact of where giants came from and and the fact that demons is a difference between a demon and an angel they are not the same thing a demon is the spirit of the offsprings of the angels. Um, the reason that they have to possess someone is because they're half angel and half human. Now, I ain't trying to get into that. I'm not trying to get into a teaching on that, but you, you got to have that understanding. So when I came across that, I, I stopped. And I was like, well, wait a minute. 
because I understand that nothing in the Bible is there just to be there. You know, we read the, you know, you get certain scriptures that have long genealogies and he begets and he beget and he beget and he beget. You'd be like, I ain't writing all that. Just skip it. And you feel like, what's the point? If you really took the time, and I have not done this with all of them, but if you take the time and look up the names of these people, and then if it tells you a name and where they were born, that's really important. It, there's a story within the story. God's word is, is, is deep enough just reading it. But if you start really, really going and looking up names of people and names of cities and all that different kind of stuff, they tell stories in themselves. And I'm getting, I'm trying not to get off track here. <laughs> but anyway, it's hard because God's word is so good. But it was one of the situations where I was like, okay, why is this here? Why was it important to God that we understood that the eating of meat was his idea? You don't just be reading the word and all of a sudden you see men eat meat. No, God started this. God was the one who gave Noah meat to eat. So then I'm one of those type of people. I, you know, people say, you should ask God questions. I ask God questions because it's his word and he wants us to know what was going on. So I was like, okay, Lord, why did you give man, give Noah and his family meat to eat? Why, why now? Why in this time? What was going on? What, what was the point of it? And so, you know, God, you know, begins to just show me things and he takes me back to things that I didn't really think about. And I remembered reading Rebecca Brown's book. I think it's in her set, the set, well, I don't know if it's her second book, but it's the part two to prepare for, uh, pre, no, part two to, he came to set the captives free and the name of it is prepare for war. I think it's in prepare for war. And she was a physician. I think she was a cancer doctor. I, I think I'm not real sure, but anyway, she was a, she was a physician and she was saying that there's a substance in meat that strengthens somehow the your spirit man and it's not just protein it's something else and you can only get it from meat from animal meat you can't substitute it you can't take a pill for it whatever this is it, it somehow affects the spirit man now i'll be honest with you i can't remember if i saw the scripture first and went back to that teaching. I think I, I think I read the saw the teaching first and then paid attention to the scripture. Because I remember when I when I started asking God, I said, Lord, help me to understand why was this important to you? Because if you you could have just let us suddenly see men eating meat and then just put two and two. You know, there are some things in the Bible that God you know, that you kind of have to research and study to get to pull out what's really happening. But when God puts something in like that, I'm like, OK, this isn't here just to be floating around in the Bible. There's a reason why you gave us this information. And most people don't pay this any attention. Like I said, I mean, I know I'm not the 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 all experience about what goes on in churches, but correct me if I'm wrong. If you've got one of the pastors that teach on everything, you don't know how blessed you are. But most ministers don't don't teach or preach on this. So the Lord began over a period of time to show me different angles of why this was. And one of the first things that he showed me was the time from the Garden of Eden up to Noah's days, the time of the flood. When you look at the time period compared to the time of the flood up even until now, and we're still, you know, waiting for him to part the sky you know, I believe in, I'm a pre-trib rapture believer, um, regardless of which, if I die 10 days from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, up until this point that we're living now, um, there are a lot more people in this time than it was between the Garden of Eden and the story of Noah. And the Lord began to speak to me about the wickedness. And you think about the fact that it got so wicked that God felt the need to just kill everybody. I'm just going to save Noah and his family because they're the only ones not sleeping around with fallen angels and they kept themselves pure. Now that the Bible doesn't, when it says that, that Noah was perfect in all of his ways, it's not saying that Noah was without sin or that he never made 
mistakes because he got drunk <laughs> as soon as he got off the boat. But I think it was more he 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 kept himself. Uh, he he continued to walk with the Lord, and he didn't get into the stuff that other people were getting into. And people don't understand it's it's important to not do what everybody else is doing. But anyway, um, so that was the first thing that God put in my heart to go chasing in my mind, like, think about this, you know, the, the, the time span. And so what I began to think was, okay, so from the time between, uh, Adam and Eve getting kicked out of the garden up to the time of the flood was a much shorter time between the flood and where we are even just today. So what, what, what's going on that men were so wicked in that short of a time? So you felt the need to destroy them. Why is it taking longer for us to get there? Because the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be uh, at the return of the son of man. And as bad as the world is right now, as the, the crazy stuff that's just going on here in America with the crazy laws that they're setting, you trying to build up a platform for pedophiles. And I will say this on tape. You, you, you touch mine. And I will kill you dead and go to jail happy. Understand me. Don't mess with my kids. Anyway, Lord, help me to keep going. So um, the laws that are being passed and, and the stuff that people are accepting and, and the stuff that people are at, people that say they're Christians, the stuff that they're defending and saying, well, who are you to judge? And I like to let you know they don't read the word. But anyway. So I, you know, the God sent me down that path of just really, when I say he sent me down a path, it means he get, he puts me in a place where I'm constantly thinking about it and I'm constantly coming to him and I'm, and then he shows me bits and pieces. And then as time started going, well, that was what, let me explain. So what he was showing me was, um, I made it, you know, he made a promise not to destroy the world again by, by, by a flood, um, and he knew, you know, he knew when he was sending Jesus to, when Jesus was going to come and he knew, you know, the, the very day, the hour that the rapture would happen and the, the tribulation and all those types of things. But there's a lot more span in years than it was from that time. So I was like, okay, well, what, what, what did, what does have, what does eating meat have to do with it? Because as, because what he does with me is as I continue to to wonder and ponder and I ask and I, I lay in my bed and just talk to him and like, well, Lord. And so where he was taking me to was getting the understanding that was where, um, why was this one of the first things you made a change in when they got off the boat and what he, and then he took me back. This is what makes me remember, remember now that I read Rebecca's book before I recognized this scripture. Cause then he'd start taking me back to Rebecca's book and what she talked about how this, there's this substance in meat that has something to do with your spirit, man. That's not, I'm not talking about having strength, like what you get protein, you know, you get to eat your protein, you got to eat your spinach and all that kind of stuff. This is something that strengthens your spirit, man, not your, not your body, your spirit, man. Because if you know anything about spiritual warfare, when you go into spiritual warfare and come out of that thing, you're exhausted. That's why, you know, people think preachers are tired at the end of the day because they've been humping and, and the Lord and all that. Yeah, da, 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 hallelujah. But it's it's because they're fighting in the spirit realm when they're preaching the word of God. Um, when you hear people talk about witches and you always see they always predict witches as being old. Well, the reason that they look so old is because they spend so much time in the spirit realm. So let me get that out. So this video is going to be longer than I intended. So, um, so that was one of the things that he was showing me was, um, this, the difference is that this is not protein. I'm not talking about protein y'all. It's some substance that you can only get out of animals that have that, that some kind of way deals with your spirit man. And so what God began to show me, then he started talking to me about Elijah and how whew, I'm getting full how Elijah, he sends Elijah, Elijah to the brook Cherith. I, I want to say that's in second Kings. It might be in first because I want to say it's in second Kings 17. I'm not real sure, but I'm, I will put uh, links in the video. Uh, not links, uh, put the scriptures in the video. He starts talking to me. Now this is, now understand me, this whole journey of him showing me this, we're talking over a period of months. It could even be years. I would say years because one of the, something I'm going to share in this video 
he didn't enlighten me to make the connection to it all to with until like two or three weeks ago. So anyway, so he starts showing me Elijah. So he sends Elijah to the brook Cherith and feeds him meat and bread in the morning and meat and bread in the evening. So that right there was enough. I was like, okay, you fed him meat. You made sure that he ate meat twice a day. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that means you should eat meat twice a day. It might mean that, but I'm not saying that because I'm not going to sit here and say, God told me that we should eat meat twice a day. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it was important enough to God that Elijah eat meat twice a day. Cause you know, he could have fed him vegetables. He could have fed him fruit. Um, but it wasn't just that he ate meat twice a day. He sent a raven. A raven. Okay. He had a bird bring him a steak twice a day. Then I, I, I apologize to y'all. I try not to be perfect when I do these videos because I just want to share the way God shares with me. And I'm big on, 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 on people reading scripture. So when I finish the, when I finish my videos, I go and I gather all of my scriptures and put them in the, put it in the, in the, at the bottom, you know, the description or whatever. So anyway, so I'm like, I'm like, oh, wow. You know, you know, cause we all know the story about how Elijah, you know, got sent to the brook chair and God fed him meat and bread in the morning and meat and bread in the evening. And then he had sent a raven to bring him the food. And we think, oh, that's awesome. And da, 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 da. But we don't make the connection between that and him giving Noah meat to eat after the flood. And then when you look at, okay, on his way back to, I guess it was Jerusalem, he stops and he has this encounter with this woman and, you know, where she, he tells her, make me, make me a, make me a cake or whatever. And, you know, he blesses her house and all that. And, you know, we, we sometimes get distracted. It's like when you, when you're in the court of law and the, the attorney is trying to make his case and he grills this, uh, the, the, the person who's given the testimony and then he goes off to something totally else. <laughs> and you'd be like, what, what, what? how you just how you just change the subject and then he'll come back later and catch you in a lie i'm not saying that god will catch us in a lie or that we'll catch god in a lie but i'm just saying sometimes we we tend to get distracted because we we see that okay then he goes and then the next thing you see is elijah going and challenges challenging the the priest of baal and it's really funny i love reading that passage of the scripture because he tells them um Whoever can, we're going to put fire, we're going to put water, we, you know, we're going to build an altar, whatever. And whoever's God is God will light this altar. And the people are doing all this foolishness all day long. These are the children of Israel. These people, your, your grandmama's grandmama's grandmama walked across the Red Sea on dry ground. And y'all running around cutting yourselves, singing out to these doggone demon gods, trying to get to prove he trying to get him to answer. And Elijah's like, well, maybe he's sleeping or maybe he's on a long trip. And it's like really hilarious when you read the Bible. It's funny. I'm, it's some stuff in the Bible. Have you cracking up if you read it right? And so he's like basically talking trash. <laughs> about they little false gods they running around doing all this foolish stuff so they all day long he sits there he's something like, okay i'm gonna let, just let y'all let y'all wear yourselves up. so finally he says all right he says i put you know put some water on the trough and they put water he's put some put it on there again put it in. so he basically soaks the wood and everything just soaks it soaks it make sure it's good and wet and he said the god that that, that rains down fire from heaven he is god and um, he basically tell, I want y'all to read the scripture, but he basically tells the people, uh, he's basically telling, um, Israel, you know, the God who rains fire down on this, on this altar, he is God. He says, choose, you know, choose, you know, who, who are you going to serve? You either going to, you going to serve if, if God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him, but choose who you're going to serve today. And so he he talks to God and he says, Lord, you know, I'm paraphrasing growthly, but Lord, you sent me here and I'm, you know, demonstrating your power. I need you to, I need you to show up and show these people that you're God. And God rains fire down from heaven and burns everything up on the altar. And then the people, you know, are crying out the Lord. He is God. The Lord. He is God. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo. Glory. 
anyway, <laughs> just gives me, oh, Lord, bless your name. And so when you when you read that story and then and, and, you know, God shows up so mightily and then he goes and he kills. I think it says, was it 400 of the priests of Baal and and wins Israel back to God. And so we don't really make the connection between this big. Now, understand me, that was spiritual warfare. That was spiritual warfare. We don't make the connection between the eating of meat twice a day and him going before these priests. And it was such a powerful battle. Now, we, we know one power, it wasn't a, a battle for God because when Jesus comes back here, all he's going to do is say a word. and It's going to be over. I believe he's just going to say, I am. That's just me. The Bible don't say that. That's just what I believe. I, but anyway, um. So we, 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 we don't make that connection that before God sent him into this battle, he fed him meat twice a day. Now, I don't know if the Bible indicates how long he was at the brook chair. If I know it says he was at the brook until the brook dried up. Um, and I know that there's, there's uh, some meaning to that. I have not studied that. But so anyway, so I'm saying all this to say. And then there were other scriptures that I, for, for some reason, I, I have to go, I would have to go back and read the article that I wrote because I put all, put all of it in the article. But there were some other scriptures that he showed me where before he sent certain people into battle, he fed them meat or he made sure that they ate meat or you would see them eating meat. And he was showing me the, the importance of it. So I was like, okay, Lord. And so, you know, it's not hard for me because I'm like, I, I'm not crazy. I'm not making this stuff up. And a lot of times I'll be like, Lord, am I crazy? Am I making this stuff up? And then he'll come behind me and he'll say, oh, okay, let me just take this off and show you. And I'll be like, oh my goodness, I'm not crazy. I didn't make this stuff up. So anyway, so, so he was like showing me all these things and he showed me different scriptures and everything. And he was, he was telling me, he was saying, you know, that, you know, I didn't really need a deep understanding. My whole attitude about it was when I read Genesis chapter nine, did I say chapter? I was in chapter nine that I read. When I read Genesis chapter nine and I see God being the one who ordained the eating of meat, that he made it clear that it was his idea. That alone is enough for me not to be vegetarian. Now, understand me. I like my meat. But if God told me that I shouldn't be eating it, I will give it up. Okay? But I do like a nice steak every once in a while. All right? So, ooh, and I'm a fish fanatic. I don't know why people say fish isn't meat because it's flesh. But anyway. So, um, that that's enough for me to know that Christians should not be trying to take on vegetarianism or veganism, which is even worse because it's making sure you don't get nothing from the animal. So um, like if that wasn't enough. So, okay, so I have this video and did I buy that video here or did I buy it in, in when I was still living in Dallas? I honestly can't remember when I first bought this video, but it's this video and the name of the video is Gods of the New Age. And it was uh, a documentary that was put together by Carol Carol Matriciana, she spells her name C-A-R-Y-L, Carol, and it was Matriciana, M-A-T-R-I-S-C-I-A-N-A, -I, -I, I think is how she spelled it. Love that woman. She went on home to be with the Lord, and so did uh, Rebecca Brown. Um, bless God for their ministries. Uh, Carol Matriciana, she did a lot of videos. You, if you're really interested in spiritual things, you should really look her up. She grew up in India. She used to be Hindu and she came to know Christ. I'm not trying to tell her story because I'm trying to, this video is way longer than I intended for it to be. I guess I need to stop being silly. But anyway, um, so in, I, now understand me when I tell you, if I say I have watched that video a hundred times, I am by no means exaggerating. I'm probably minimalizing it because that video has so much information in it that I, I promise you, if I pop it in tonight and watch it, I'm going to learn something else. And I have watched that video easily over a hundred times. And um, now it's actually on YouTube. The full video is on YouTube free. If you don't have a YouTube account, I think you can still watch it. Um, you, you just, I don't think you, I think you can't comment if you don't have an account, but whatever, but it's called gods of the new age. And so I had watched this video and had, I mean, had watched it. I don't know how many times. And so it's like one day I sit down and said, oh, let me watch this video again. 
there's this woman in the video. She was a yoga guru. She was a deep, I don't know what her position was, but she was like a teacher that, that taught all of this new age stuff and all the yoga and all the different stuff that they do. And she made a comment in the video. And what I wish I had, one thing I wish I had done was went back and watch the video so that I could tell you exactly what time in the video, but you need to watch the whole video. If you're going to watch it, watch it. Cause I'm telling you, you'll learn a lot of stuff if you really want to know truth. So in the video, she, she makes this comment about how they don't eat meat. She said, we don't eat meat. And we call people who eat meat eaters. And she says, the reason that we don't eat meat is because it blocks our ability to tap into the spirit realm. I'm like, what, what, what was she say? I had hit rewind. Cause I'm like, how many times have I watched this video and didn't catch it? So basically God was showing me in reverse why Christians shouldn't be vegetarians. So I, I, play, I, I rewound it. Now, yeah, that's what she said. She said, they, the people who practice these uh, pagan religions, they don't eat meat because eating meats, how does she say, blocks their vibrations and it hinders them from being able to tap into the spirit realm. Okay. So I was like, okay, Lord, you really want me to understand this. So he really started showing me that these people were so overtaken by, because you have to understand that angels, even though they were able to put themselves in enough form to habitate with women and, and impregnate them and, and have children, they're still spirit beings. And what God began to share with me was he, the, the, they were, the people were so open to the spiritual uh, activity that when they, when God put meat in, when he added meat to the man's diet, it slowed that down. Because if, if not, Jesus would have been, been and came back. And a lot of us probably would have never been born. Hello. A lot of us probably would have still been in our sin and died in on our way to hell. And so that struck a chord with me because it's like when he started giving me that revelation that um, I had to add meat into man's diet. Now, you have to understand that God made the animals before he made man. He prepared everything that we needed before we came here. You got to remember that God is all knowing and all present, and all wise. So he knew the day is going to come where man is going to get so wicked that he's going to need something that's going to keep him from being so open to the spirit realm. So I'm going to put this substance in meat. And I'm going to, you know, people, I know people, well, well, why didn't he just do that in the first place? God has his reasons why he does certain things. There's some things I don't question. He's God. He's sovereign. Everything that he does is good and perfect. But he, he made sure that there was something in the earth that we could partake of that would help us to not be so open to the spirit realm. Okay. I know, I don't know if y'all still listen. I hope you are because this is important. So like I said, he, he, he showed me, you know, from his word and, and, and different things that were going on in the word. And then he showed me, I always say he showed me in reverse. So when I say that, what I'm saying is that he allowed a wicked person who practices veganism or vegetarianism, veganism in order for them to do the wicked things that they do. And they, re they recognize that if we eat meat, we can't contact our, our spirit guides, which is just demons and fallen angels. I think spirit guides actually are fallen angels. I don't think they're demons. I think they're fallen angels, but the wicked things that they do that the Bible says are so wicked that you can't even speak on some of the stuff that they do. That was enough for me. I was like, okay, I got it. So then they're there. So then back to this woman who came to this church and basically had almost the whole church going vegetarian. And then um, a church that I used to go to, there was a woman that was going around telling everybody it, you know, you, you know, you got to stop eating meat. Well, you know, when you, when you stop eating meat, you know, your legs don't hurt, you know, didn't hurt. My knees didn't hurt. When I went up and down the stairs, I could move around a little bit better. I was resting better at night. And well, didn't they say the same thing about yoga? Now, if you one of them Christians who still think it's okay to do yoga, you might as well have not even started watching this video because this ain't for you because you still playing. But yoga's not for Christians. And so 
you know, you, people are talking about all of the benefits of the body that, that we're getting. Well, you know, people that take yoga will tell you, well, I feel much more relaxed. I don't get upset or whatever. Well, the devil will do whatever he has to do to get you outside of the will of God. And then what happens is people start doing these practices. And then what it does is it pulls you further and further away from God because the bottom line is you are outside of his will. The longer you stay outside of his will, the further away from him you will get. And there's a place where the devil will get you. Well, he'll say, okay, now I'm going to blind you to truth so that no matter who comes to you telling you right from wrong, you will not be able to receive it. That is not a place that you want to be. Don't play with God. Play with him if you want to. But when you read Romans chapter one, it's very clear. These folks, God said, you acknowledge the creature rather than, cre than the creator. Sometimes that creature, we, we think about that in different kind of ways. Sometimes that creature is simply somebody telling you, girl, ain't nothing wrong with doing yoga. Ain't nothing wrong with Pilates. Girl, please. Uh, what's that other one? Girl, ain't nothing wrong with Zumba. Girl, you just getting your fit on. You Girl, you just going to get the weight off and feel better and refreshed on your way to hell because there is a scripture and it's the scripture that I'm going to be reading in a minute. It's part of this whole thing. We'll get to that. Let me get to that. So that's what God was, was showing me that. So, so like I said, people, you know, these people, it's becoming this fad now where everybody's talking about going vegan, you know, vegetarian wasn't enough. First, everybody's going vegetarian. I'm just going to eat vegetables. I'm not going to, girl, I don't eat meat and I don't meat and I don't eat red meat and that girl, please. I eat everything God gave me to eat. Okay. Pray over it. And then there's a scripture for that too. So anyway, so all these people are going into all this uh, veganism and vegetarianism. And this one chick was spreading around the church that I was going to. And people were picking this up. And people were talking about how, girl, my knees don't hurt when I go upstairs no more. I've got more energy. And, and excuse the French, my poop don't stink. Okay. But God was the one who ordained the eating of meat. How is that not enough? Because I figure if God told Noah, gave, gave Noah eat meat to eat, he intended for Noah to eat the meat. You think God didn't know that if you didn't eat meat, your poop wouldn't stink? He's God. And if he's given it to you, then you need it. Let's just get that straight. If God provided it for you, you needed it. Yes, he gives us the desires of our hearts. But he will never give us anything that's going to pull us away from him. And everything that he has given us is for our benefit. So when you run around here talking about eating meat is bad for you, what you're saying is that God does things that are not good for us. And how dare you in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that whole thought pattern. So anyway, let me get, because I could get, you know, I get on a roll. Let me see, let me get to this scripture. This scripture is in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Somebody said, I knew she was going there. Well, if you knew I was going there, then you all not be calling yourself being a doggone vegetarian. Hello. Get some sense about yourself. So I was just, just a few weeks ago, I was reading this scripture and I was like, oh my Lord, I read the scriptures. One of my favorites. Didn't put this together. It ain't nowhere. I don't believe it's in my, I don't believe it's in my article. I have to read it. Maybe I just forgot about it. But anyway, so this is first Timothy chapter four that I'm reading. Of course, out of the Amplified Bible. But the Holy Spirit, let me pull this up. It's a little, the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times, some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. 